This is a 20 gallon stainless steel paint pot. I bought it on eBay for $400. I have an upcoming project where I need to pressure cast some large urethane parts. So this video is gonna be all about how to convert this paint tank into a large pressure casting vessel. My name is Eric Stribble. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. Alfred Backpack Hanger in stainless steel and aluminum designed by me holds your backpack, lets you charge your phone, holds your keys, super versatile. So I'm packing up some here that were recently sold. Thanks for those of you who've purchased recently. It really helps support the channel. PCB Way's fifth design contest is underway. Win up to $1,500 in cash. Choose from three categories, including next-gen hardware, earth-friendly projects, and a free theme project. Project entry deadline is December 31st, 2022. For full contest details, click the link in the description below. The first thing that has to happen for this tank to get converted is to be disassembled and remove all the components that I don't need, which is pretty much everything, all these pipes and stuff. They're all stainless steel. I keep some of the hardware from the top and reuse that, but a lot of these are just excess uh, entryway holes and I don't need those. I'm going to save the hardware, but everything else is going to get plugged up and or removed since it's just not needed for this pressure tank application. If you notice, things kind of flex and it's very questionable as to whether this tank actually held any significant pressure as a paint tank. I highly, highly doubt it. Just the way things are put together, it's, it's unlikely that it held any significant pressure in this seal. It was a piece of like nylon or, or I don't know. I cast a quick seal to do some basic testing. We'll talk a little bit more about that later in the video. I have two large holes that need to be sealed up and I build those in CAD so that they can be cut out from some steel. And I get that from a local place called Factory Steel. Here you can see what it looks like inside of this place. This is a sort of classic Detroit medium sized steel. Uh, warehouse distribution place. I get it water jet cut and that's 60,000 PSI right there, boys. That is a lot of force cutting out this steel and it works really well. And I end up with these two nice simple parts that I can use to seal the tank with. All right, I clean up the plates that are cut with a little bit of acetone so I can get them ready. And I'm gonna tap the outsides, quarter 20, I think, cause that's what my shop kind of runs on. Uh, if it's not metric and readily available at any hardware store, this is half inch NPT. And this is for the pressure uh, relief valve for the tank. You saw me cutting off the studs that were welded into this lid. They were welded in from the bottom and they needed to be drilled out and cleaned up because I'm gonna end up putting the plates on the inside so that the pressure of the tank helps seal it. I have some one millimeter gasket material here and we cut that out with the scissors, punch some holes in it and we'll use this material to help seal those plates on the bottom inside of the lid for the tank. Next, I'm gonna start assembly. So first I'll put the plates on and these are held in place with a quarter 20 stainless steel bolts. And on the larger opening, I actually drilled a few more holes just so I could get even consistent pressure on the whole plate. There's the pressure relief valve that's in brass. I'm reusing some of this original hardware. I've stayed away from traditional sort of black iron pipe and stay with brass and stainless steel. I find that that stuff seals a little bit better. Sometimes the porosity of the black iron stuff 
leaks. This is a three inch cap over that hole and I put the pressure and temperature sensor here to protect the probe on the inside. This is the seal currently with the groove kind of built in and I thought that this was really gonna work or I was hoping it was really gonna work. I've done some tests and it does hold pressure, maybe 30, maybe 35 PSI, something like that. I'd like it to hold some more. So while this works and I possibly could make it work, I really want it to hold more in the 40 to 50 PSI range. So I think I'm, I'm gonna take this out and redo this seal um, and try again. Removing the seal that I cast is relatively straightforward. It sticks pretty decent to the stainless steel, but you can certainly pull it up with a little bit of force and remove it. So I pour another one. This is probably like a Shore 80 mm, A. So it has some flexibility in it. It's not super hard like a Shore D. And that's what you want in a silicone and it's polyurethane that I'm using here. And I'm using a little torch here to pop any bubbles on the top surface. I need to build an exhaust vent muffler. And for this, I use PVC and I'm gonna mill out some slots in the cap of a piece of PVC here on my drill press. I have a couple videos about making these exhaust mufflers and just plastic machining on drill presses. And this is the exhaust so that I can fully open the valve very quickly and let all the air out and keep that noise down so I don't have to wear hearing equipment because it's a lot of volume of air that comes out of this thing. And I'm stuffing in a piece of terry cloth uh, in here and that works really great to basically dampen the sound and slow the release of the air. This little 20 gallon air tank needs a cart to move it around the shop. I'm using one inch black pipe here. This is stuff that you can buy at your local big box retailer. And then I'm using some lockable casters that slot into the bottom. I'm gonna 3D print some little adjuster feet. These are gonna sit on top of the one inch tubes and angle against the tank so that they can support the tank see me put them on here we just uh, thread them on it's a nice tight fit and then we'll screw on the adjustable angle pads and this is what will sit against the tank and it works like a charm even though it's 3d printed it's plenty strong enough to hold this you know 100 gallon tank and then i use some straps some ratchet straps i'll probably upgrade that in the future I need to build some knobs that are going to go over the existing turnbuckles or the clamping lock mechanisms, whatever you call those things. And I've done this in the past. I print them out of orange PLA and I put the little turn screws in and then I super glue it in as well to hold it in place. And we'll backfill this with polyurethane. You see there's a little hole there. I print it in two pieces and then we'll inject the polyurethane inside of that. And it's important to seal the two pieces together with some super glue so no resin will seep out when we fill them. I'm gonna fill all four of the knobs with a syringe just using some urethane resin. Probably sets up in like 10 minutes. I'm making kind of a big mess here and I'm gonna have to go back and clean them up a little bit. That's sort of due to my sloppiness here and just being in a hurry trying to get this stuff done. But it cleans up pretty decent before it hardens all the way. So let's make something in the tank. We'll cast something in the tank under pressure. This tank was specifically built to hold this mold. And this is a part that you've seen me cast in the past. These are large vehicle shapes. 
they just end up getting painted by paint manufacturers to showcase their new paints. I pop the bubbles on the top of the resin, put the top on, seal it up. Now I have several videos uh, specifically about making molds like this and in detail about casting a vehicle like this or a part like this. And we'll pour the rest of the resin in through the funnel at the top until we see it come out of the little resin straws there. We can place it inside the tank. Put the lid on. It's all stainless steel. It's pretty heavy actually, a little heavier than I would like. And I have a little spacer at the top to help me space it evenly around the whole thing. I need to end up putting bar clamps on this thing. I need to have eight touch points. So certainly the lid is insufficient the way it is. And I can get it to the 50 PSI here. We'll take the part out and we'll get a very nice pressure cast part with uh, significantly reduced porosity and it has minimal flesh. Uh, so I would, you know, would say this is a successful part. There's not a lot of cleanup, very minimal, and you get a better quality part through the pressure casting process. While the tank was successful and it works and I can cast under pressure, it still has some major issues that need to be addressed for it to be viable for me as a solution uh, and function a little bit better. The main thing is that the thickness of this material right here is under three millimeters, about a sixteenth of an inch. This is really insufficient for uh, holding pressure for a tank of this capacity and to be holding at 50 PSI, this surface area here needs to be significantly more. So what has to happen is a ring needs to be welded around the entire perimeter of this thing to increase that thickness and get it up to a good, uh, I would say five or six millimeters at least, uh, maybe more so that you have good contact and good surface area for sealing the entire tank. The other issue is the lid. This lid really just is not rigid enough to seal on this tank. Even though it's stainless steel and it's pretty strong, this, this probably isn't enough thickness to prevent deflection. Uh, additionally, there's only four screw points <clears throat> on this tank, and that's not enough either. There really needs to be eight. And you saw I was using those additional clamps to basically seal the lid because the lid would flex. So in addition to the thickness of this tank not being thick enough here to, to really create a good seal, this lid really needs to be recast. So if you are a aluminum caster and you can cast a 20 inch diameter lid and you're interested in partnering and making a, a video and collaborating, I would love to recast this tank. I could build it in CAD and build the model, uh, the 3D model and uh, 3D print. And I would love to recast this lid in aluminum to seal this. Uh, that would be a fantastic collaboration. If you are an aluminum caster experience that has the capabilities to do something this scale or this size, then please reach out. I would love to chat with you and create a new lid for this uh, to seal this tank and make it a little bit lighter as well. And the aluminum would do that. So yeah, tank works, it was successful. I'm able to cast parts, but it, it has some issues that sort of need to be addressed. And maybe uh, someday they'll get addressed and uh, I'll make another video about it. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure to hit the bell so you get notifications every time I have a new video. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links in the description below and on the channel page. Rock on. Don't forget to check out the t-shirts and hoodies in the merch shelf below. 
Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.